Today, I'm going to be talking to you about helmets. Helmets are really important for us as motorcycle riders, and this is one of the ways in which we can protect ourselves. But there are lots of choices out there. Uh, and you know, like a buddy of mine, Chopper Vet, uh, I think, buddy, we need to have an intervention. Seriously. You know, we buy a lot of helmets for different reasons, uh, for style, for function. But, and of course, for motor vloggers like us, we'll choose one that has the least amount of wind and looks damn cool. <laughs> You know, at the end of the day, helmets is about safety and the different types of testing standards there are and the types of helmets that we can have to give us the full amount of protection. So today, I'm going to take you on the road and we're going to talk a little bit about the safety of helmets and a little overview of my RI RX7. Hello everyone, my name is Fletch and today we'll be talking about helmets, right? And probably one of the most important things that takes care of uh, your peanut or your noggin or whatever else you want to call it. Uh, but I think it's the most important thing. Uh, and of course, besides talking about the helmets, I will also be doing a quick uh, overview, well not really a review uh, of this particular helmet this one which is the RI RX7 which we'll talk about a little later on now helmets I think in choosing helmets one of the most important things is probably the safety aspect of it when we talk about the safety aspect uh, it means probably the rating of the helmets there are several ratings uh, that are out there with these standards um, obviously, the helmets have gone through rigorous testing. Um, you have, of course, DOT, Snell, ECC, and, uh, of course, in the Singapore context, uh, PSB. I'll put uh, what it means below, um, and I'll talk a little bit more uh, as we go along about these uh, safety ratings. Now, insofar as safety ratings go, uh, I think DOT happens to be uh, one of the more lowest rated helmet rated system, if you can call it that, um, there is, followed by Snell and ECC. Now, ECC is the European standard of measurement. and. Uh, our government or the approving body, should I say, uh, actually the uh, PSD is adopting the ECC standard, because that's the European standard, and also the ratings for emission standards as well, which were into Euro 4 and the first uh, Euro 5. Now, in choosing a helmet, I think it's very important that um, you take into account the rating system that we have, of course, but you also have to take into account uh, how much safety it affords you, right? Now, if the helmet is such that um, it doesn't afford you safety, meaning the type of helmet, right? Those beanies that we all wear uh, as Harley riders, I think that's one of the worst because they afford you the, li the, the, the least amount of uh, safety there is. 
because you don't have the coverage of most of your skull or your noggin or your peanut but it also doesn't afford you the most importantly your jaw right i mean and of course obviously your head for being a beanie i think it won't really stay on your head very much next is the open face helmet you know the ones with the face shields or simply without the face shields and people wear goggles and so forth uh, on it now those helmets um, afford you some protection for your head but again in, in an event of a crash it doesn't really give you the protection on your jaw right which is pretty important as well uh, no matter what the ratings are uh, yes it's passed uh, the drop test and so forth but you know at the end of the day if it doesn't protect your jaw then you know it's not really worth it so the best would be a full face helmet like this full face helmets afford you all the uh, protection you can and of course you know those uh, I, I think if you remember if you look uh, and I'll leave the on the cards above about my review of the shark now that's not a full face helmet they have a little plastic cowl and that will go off in a crash and it's basically uh, an open face helmet not really very good yeah even though it was Snell if I remember correctly um, not a very good idea to get I think if you're in a we always say that, yeah, no, let's put on a, a helmet. It's just going to be a short trip, you know, nothing is going to happen. But you never know, right? Uh, as, far, as much as possible, I try to wear a full face helmet without, you know, compromising safety and so forth. I know it's like in Singapore, for instance, it's really very hot. And imagine having to wear a full face like this. You know, you're sweating tons. But again, just like when I talked about uh, protective gear, I'd rather sweat than bleed. Trust me. That's the most important thing. Next, when it comes to safety, is fitment. I think fitment is also pretty important. Know your sizes. There's, I think all the manufacturers come up with a, a, a sizing chart that tells you how many cm it fits. To measure it, you do it you take a tape measure and measure it above uh, your eyebrow and you know the circumference of your head and from there you'll be able to tell what is the size of your noggin to uh, decide which helmet you are i mean to me helmets should not be bought online if you're not too sure you know uh, from experience some of it fits uh, most of them, like the Bitwell and the RIs and the Showies, uh, tend to meet those uh, measurement standards and somehow it fits. Uh, you, you end up choosing the right size. But in the case of HJC, for instance, I realize that I always have to step up because it's just between uh, the size, because I'm size 61 cm. It translates normally to a large and I will end up having to take an extra large uh, for, say, the HGC helmet. So, like shoes and clothes, it's better to try them on, you know. Best that you put it on uh, and, and try it and see if the fitment is correct. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to end up wearing a helmet that pinches at the top of your head or you feel pressure at the sides of your head and that's going to be very uncomfortable especially for longer rides because at the end of the day you want to wear a helmet that you are comfortable with and that you're able to ride over a long distance over a long time um, without feeling discomfort and so forth now next is again going back to what I was saying about fitment ensure that number one when you put the helmet on there is no pinching at the top of your head uh, i know we have different uh, head sizes and head shapes take into account uh, that when you wear it uh, obviously it's going to be a little tight but there's always a period of wear in and in the wear in period is when then it'll get a little bit better so you don't choose something that's too tight 
or too loose either because if you shake your head right and you find that it's loose that's not going to help you when it wears in so again it doesn't afford you very much safety that way now let's talk about the ratings again um, for the most part they're all internationally recognized you know dot snell ecc the one that that i have a little bugbear about is the local one in singapore which is called uh, the psb right now the psb rating is rated at with the ecc standards now my problem with that is that unfortunately they have passed a law that requires all helmets now to be certified PSB approved. That means they will still have to go through another round of testing. That's another problem for, I believe, the, the importers and everything else because you have already the cost of importing all the taxes and the VATs and GSTs and what have you. Then you add the cost of X number of helmets that has to be destroyed in the testing process before you finally get that little sticker that you can stick onto the helmet to say it's approved. So that's really affecting the cost of the helmets. And of course, the cost of the helmets gets translated back to us. And you should see the crazy prices that we have here in Singapore on these helmets. I mean, I mean this one costs about around 600 US dollars, can you imagine? It shouldn't cost that much, but because you've got the taxes and the GST and everything else. And then finally, of course, they have to push off the cost of the destroyed helmets to us. Just to make sure that it's PSB approved. So that's something that I think it's a, a terrible waste. I get it. I get it. I'm not whinging for the sake of whinging. I get it that we have to have certain standards because here in Asia, a lot of times, a lot of these um, motorcycle riders tend to wear helmets that are dinky, half caps or those cheapo helmets, they cost like 20 bucks or 30 bucks and doesn't afford you any kind of safety. And worse still, it's manufactured locally or, or within the region and has gone through no testing at all. So I get it, those helmets need to go through the testing thing and, and, and be, but again you know even if it does pass the, the test uh, I, I have a question mark about the integrity of the helmet anyway you know how, how good can the helmet be at 20 bucks I'm sorry to say you know what kind of materials do you use to be able to you know sell it at that particular price or that particular price point so I have a problem with that I'd rather that if, we, every, if every helmet has to go through it, make sure that it's of a certain quality as well. I think a little bit of QC uh, um, on, on it. I mean, in, uh, I also have a question about how they test it if it can pass when it's a 20 or 30 dollar helmet. You know, it's not even dot or snell or ECC standards because I know that they go through rigorous testing at the manufacturer's point before it comes out. So, I don't know. Right, that's uh, that's a tough one. Now, I chose the RI RX7 for many reasons. Obviously, because it's ECC, it's also PSB approved. Uh, it is a full face helmet. Uh, the one good thing I like about uh, this helmet is that if you notice that it also has an exterior um, sun shield that you can flip up like this and just flip it down, glove friendly, right? Initially, Snell doesn't allow for internal um, checks. I believe that this is both Snell and ECC. Uh, sorry, not internal checks, but uh, it doesn't allow for internal sun visors. So RI has come out with this particular module. It's uh, an additional 50 bucks, but well worth it because it keep, I don't have to wear a pair of sunglasses in this helmet on a, on a gorgeous day like this and you know it fits my needs it is not overly uncomfortable and last but not least is a motor vlogger full face helmets are 
supposedly to assist in the audio, uh, the wind noise and everything else. This is, not a, a very, this is not a very noisy helmet. So that really helps a lot. Plus the fact that it's well known for its safety uh, and so forth. And hopefully the audio that comes up from this, last time I did it with this helmet, uh, I got the settings wrong and I know a lot, sorry. I know a lot of people were complaining that, you know, um, the audio is pretty bad, so hopefully it's not going to be like this today. Anyway, the RI has a lot of vents. It's got a lot of, even though I say it's not a noisy helmet, it's got a lot of vents. Uh, you've got a front vent, you've got visor vents, you've got top vents uh, as well, so I don't feel too hot in it. And, of course, um, it affords all the protection that I need. So, I, I think the RI uh, has a great reputation. Uh, I don't know if this is a myth or not, but here's a little story. Apparently, one of the motorcycle riders um, and his pillion were wearing RI's helmets uh, when they were riding. And I think for whatever reason, met with an accident. And his pillion was thrown off to the next lane. And what happened was there was a truck, well not the, the 18 wheeler truck, but you know one of those smaller trucks literally went over her head. And, one, and when the driver has gone off a little bit, the pillion actually stood up, took a walk around, took the helmet off and everything was fine. I mean this is the reputation that you have, you know, for a helmet like this. So I think whether it's a myth or not, I believe that RI's uh, quality is awesome. It meets the needs. It's expensive, yes, but I think you cannot put a price uh, on the helmet and the kind of protection you have on your head. Anyway, that's all I have to say about this little thing. Hope that you enjoyed uh, this little talk on it. Uh, I know I've been whinging a little bit, um, but I think motorcycle safety and helmets go hand in hand, and I believe that this is something that you should go and look into. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you haven't yet, please click the like button. And of course, if you haven't yet and you're new to this channel, please click the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to let you know when the next video is out. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Fletch and you have safe rides.